There have been a lot of questions about how to power the electric eel wheel 6 with a battery pack and what kind of power methods work. So today I'm going to be covering those questions in this video. So first off, I want to talk about the wall power supply that comes with every electric eel wheel 6. It supports 100 to 240 volts. So that means it'll support voltages from countries around the world. It's got this barrel connector jack, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But that's a standard connector and something that you can get, and that's the, the end that'll plug into the electric eel wheel 6. And then this is uh, the North American style plug, but this does have a, a standard connector here, and that means you can plug in other types of uh, outlets into it. So I'm still finalizing exactly what types of outlets that I'm going to be supporting. I believe this is the European standard, but um, anyways, I, I'm not ready to announce exactly which types of plugs I'll be able to ship with the electric EO wheel 6, but I'm working really hard to make sure it's more than just the North American one. I'm trying to support uh, maybe the top three or four most common plugs uh, for uh, countries that I'm shipping to. So uh, I'll have more about that later, but even if I can't include a, cl a, a plug for your country, this is a standard outlet and you'll be able to purchase one of these or an adapter. You won't have to worry about the voltages because uh, the uh, power brick supports voltages from around the world. So hopefully that answers questions about the power brick that plugs into the wall. And next I'll be talking about batteries. So these are battery packs that I've tested with the electric eel wheel six and they all work well. The first one is sort of the one I've been recommending the most. If you can get access to this one where you live, it's, it's a really good option. So it's the talent cell 6,000 milliamp hour battery pack at 12 volts. So the thing you need is you need to have a 12 volt output on whatever battery pack you choose. And these talent cell ones have it, and it looks like this. And then you just plug it into the electric eel wheel six with a cord that comes with it that looks like this. So these are barrel jacks and they're 5.5 millimeter by uh, 2.1 millimeter. And the interior portion of the plug is positive. That's the standard configuration, although some devices use the opposite, so it is something to watch for. But uh, the talent cell battery packs will just um, have that configuration and uh, definitely work well with it. This is 6,000 milliamp hours at 12 volts. This little guy, oh, one other thing about this. So this is the one, one of the reasons I'm recommending this one is because this is a bottom case and it's designed, this uh, bottom cover for the electric eel wheel six is sort of designed so that this one fits really nice into it. These others, while they provide power, you can see it's gonna wiggle around. It's also not gonna last as long. So this is the 3000 milliamp hour talent cell battery pack, um, also 12 volt output from here. So this one will definitely work. It'll last about half as long. And you just, if you wanna use it with this bottom case, you could just create some shims or put some padding in around it so that it, it fits in pretty well. You don't have to worry too much about overheating. We're discharging these batteries well under their maximum discharge capacity. And this is an interesting battery. It's the type of battery that, you know, everything from quadcopters to remote controlled cars use. They often have this type of a plug. So this isn't going to plug directly into the electric eel wheel six. So what I did was I created this plug. So this is, I think it's called a mini Dean's plug. I'll, I'll put a link to all of the parts, all three battery packs um, and the uh, parts that I used to make this connector, which are just this plug and then this jack, which will plug into the uh, electric ear wheel six. So if you can solder or have a friend that can solder, making this plug is, is pretty simple. But all this does is plugs into the battery and then you can uh, run it. You do need to have a charger for this type of battery. So if you're going to go this route, you'll want to make sure you have a charger. The good thing about these batteries are they're designed for really rapid discharge. Like this one is a 50 C battery. So basically it can discharge a hundred amps, which is way more than you need. 
Now, these batteries are rated for um, just three, uh, a maximum of three amp discharge, which works great for the electric EOL 6. You're never going to hit three amps. A uh, typical discharge at maximum speed is around 1.2 or so amps. We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. So any of these three battery packs and this one, the nice thing is you can get this in all different sorts of sizes. So you can get it in a much bigger capacity than this battery pack and it'll be a smaller size or you can get it in this little battery pack. So this is 2,200 milliamp hours and this is 3,000. So this one's a little bit smaller, but you can see that, you know, size wise, it's, you know, less than uh, maybe it's about half the size or so of that one. So you're going to get more capacity per um, uh, volume with these kinds of batteries typically just because they're designed, you know, they don't have any extra casing or um, extra circuitry to handle this USB output and stuff. So I think these are pretty interesting, but I did have to create this kind of a wire. So it's kind of up to you guys. Those are some options. There's more battery packs out there that'll definitely work. And the thing you really want to make sure is that it has some kind of a port that supports 12 volt output. And I guess one other thing about that is there's some modes of USB that support um, 12 volts, but getting those modes are actually really complicated. You can get a cord that uses this type of a, this is a type A USB port and it outputs only five volts. Uh, you can bump that up to 12 volts, but it won't provide enough current. So there are USB C ports that could provide enough current and voltage if you had, uh, the correct code to pull it, that voltage out of that port, but it gets really complicated and it's not something that I'm going to try to, uh, explain here. It's just uh, sort of beyond the scope of this. It's much more complicated than uh, anything I've sort of explained here. So we'll just stick with the, the basics. And I would recommend, unless you really know what you're doing, uh, avoid any USB ports for now and just uh, work with batteries that have uh, 12 volt output jacks like these uh, that have at least three amps. Or if you want to go with one of these batteries because you either want more capacity than this, or your country doesn't have easy access to these talent cell batteries or another 12 volt battery pack, then you can go with one of these. It's important to get one that says that it's 11.1 volts or about that. So um, that's going to be a three cell uh, LiPo battery. I should have mentioned that earlier. But uh, yeah, and you'll need a charger for your LiPo battery, which I don't have here. It's over in the other room. I won't grab it or anything, but make sure you get a charger that can support your battery. So those are kind of the extra things you'll need if you're going this route, but I've definitely tested it works great. And I think that's it for battery types. Now I wanna actually talk about how long these batteries would last. So what I've done here is I've hooked up a bench power supply to the electric EO wheel six. So you can see how much current is used at different power levels. So right now uh, it's basically turned off and it's using um, 0.016 amps. And as you turn it up the speed, you'll see that the amount of current that's being used uh, increases. I would say that this is a pretty typical speed for a lot of spinners and we're using about 0.4 amps. Would say this is a pretty fast speed for a lot of spinners, and you know we're using about um, 0.7 to 0.8 amps. And if you go all the way up to maximum speed, it's about 1.2 amps. So what that means is if you have a 6,000 milliamp battery like this one that I've recommended, then if you're spinning at a speed that's one amp, this would last about six hours. If you're spinning at half an amp, then this would last 12 hours. So I think that for the typical user, this battery is going to last between uh, 6 and 12 hours. If you're spinning at the absolute maximum speed, then this would only last about 5 hours. Let's say to be really conservative or, you know, to be pretty conservative that for most spinners, this would last about 6 hours. That would mean that this littler one would last 
about three hours. And this little tiny guy would last, this one's 2,200 uh, milliamp hours. So this one would last uh, about 2.2 hours. Now, if you're only spinning at about half the maximum speed, you could really double that, double those numbers. So I can't really give like a definitive number on how long these batteries will last, but um, that's kind of an overview of how it will work. It really depends on how fast you're spinning with the battery. That, that really affects battery life. So hopefully this video was useful. Thanks for watching.